My memory so stink, so if I take a long time, I'm trying to remember or I'm trying to make up a lie. My first real boyfriend I met when I was 14 and I met him on MSE Messenger on the old dial-up. Um, and then, what are we, 16 years later, uh, he was my baby daddy. <laughs> oh my God, that's so embarrassing. But I mean, it's just like Tinder, kind of, if 14-year-olds were allowed on Tinder. And that's why they're not allowed on Tinder. <laughs> Oh, do you remember Twister? The tornado movie? Bro, that was so sick. Me and my mate went and saw it, and then when we got home, we, like, turned all the couches upside down and then, like, reenacted the belt scene. Like, <laughs> for, like, <laughs> like, three hours. When I was maybe 14 or 15, I went to, like, a garage sale, and in the, in the like, book bin, I found the autobiography of Malcolm X. And I read it so many times and overnight became like a militant separatist. <laughs> Which my mum was like, oh, that's weird. You are definitely part white, but <laughs> but still love Malcolm X. So I still love that. It was still my favourite book. It was at the Mandadeo Football Club. Uh, I think there was about six comedians. It was my first time. I didn't want to do it. My dad forced me to. I left it until the day before to write my set and because like, I was just panicking. I was like, I don't know, what the hell do you talk about? And he was like, just tell like funny stories about stuff that happened when you were a kid or stuff that me and your mum did or stuff about your family. And then so I did it. And then when I got off the stage, I've never seen my dad happier. It was like, <laughs> it was like he was looking at a different person. And so ever since then, we've been. We've been doing comedy together. We had a show in the Comedy Fest in 2021. Together, um, our relationship survived. We didn't need too much therapy. Um, and now we just take over the dinner table with our comedy conversations. Our family absolutely hate it. Oh, no, no, I can't tell. It's racist. <laughs> I won't repeat it. That, that joke should die. <laughs> My first proper heckle was at my first pro show. I invited all of my friends. One of the friends had just gotten in from London and she had almost got arrested off the plane because she was so wasted. So she came directly from the airport to my show. All my friends were there. I was like so excited and scared for my first like pro show at the classic and as soon as I got got off the got on the stage I was like I'm a single mother from South Auckland and it was yes Gwen yes get it just the whole way through my set I had to stop in the middle and be like but you better shut the fuck up and everyone laughed but my friends were like she's she's being for real you need to be quiet yeah, we're not friends anymore but so I always feel like I did terrible, which is, is not a good good thing. I think the only thing that has changed is that I've learned to deal with it a bit more and care a little bit less. Like, I went up north and did this show in Matakana pretty early in my career, and I felt like it went terrible. And they had a pokies machine and a bar tab, so I went and got absolutely smashed with the locals. Met this lovely couple. The husband gave me 40 bucks, chucked it in the pokies, won them 100 bucks, came back to them. Went out into the courtyard, this old, like, maybe like 56-year-old lady gave me a joint, smoked that in the courtyard, completely greened out, and went back to the hotel and felt like shit about the gig and then shit physically hung over. So I, I try not to do I try to do that as little as possible now. Sounds like a good night. 